Hello and welcome to another episode of Five Minutes With. My name is Emily Foley. I am Cosmoprof North America's social media correspondent and I am very excited to have Ramon Pagan with me here today. You may know Ramon as Glow by Ramon on social media. He has a huge following, Instagram, TikTok, but let me tell you a little bit more about him. Ramon is a Puerto Rican cosmetic chemist, product developer, and esthetician whose content focuses on promoting inclusivity in the cosmetic industry, as well as making cosmetic science an approachable and fun topic for all, which you certainly do. Hello and welcome. Thank you. Hello. Hi, everyone. Let's jump right in because five minutes goes very, very quickly. Tell me, please, what ingredient or product category do you think is overhyped, overplayed versus its actual skin payoff? Personally, anything peptide related. Peptides, they're very overhyped. And they're, the research that shows the evidence that people want to achieve requires very specific delivery system and technologies that not all products guarantee. Fundamentally, the most basic and consistent benefit you're actually getting is just hydration, which gives you a very instant plumping effect. But I think like the smoother, plumper looking skin over time, that can get very overhyped. I love that. Okay, good to know. Now, same lines, what do you think is the biggest beauty lie or general misinformation being spread on beauty talk or social media in general? I think the two things right now that are really like in my head is a lot of um, free from claims, especially around the like very like chemophobic. So like certain sunscreen filters right now parabens, non-toxic rhetoric, especially fueled by apps like Yuka or the EWG, which is all based off like people basically misinterpreting data and not understanding the science behind things. Um, and the other one that's like a personal thing right now in my life is pregnancy safe skincare. So like retinol is a big one that people say you can't use while you're pregnant. Well, actually the data doesn't show anything bad about topical retinol. And same thing with sunscreens. I get a lot of questions about pregnancy safe sunscreens. All sunscreens are pregnancy safe given the data that's available right now to us, which is a lot actually. That's so interesting. As someone who's been pregnant twice, I was so amazed when I was going through having my children, how different, different doctors will tell some women do use these ingredients, don't use these, but my kids are much older. So to hear that now there's a lot of misinformation about around that's very interesting. Okay. Which I think is why it's incredible that people like yourself, cosmetic chemists who actually have the education are starting to get a bigger voice on social media as opposed to people who are not necessarily educated spreading misinformation like wildfire. Exactly. So you travel globally. What is a localized beauty trend anywhere in the world or a practice there that you've seen that you think should be adopted worldwide? I'm, I always look at Asia, especially Korea. I like Korean skincare, Korean beauty industry has a big soft spot in my heart. Um, and actually being in London recently and just meeting with a plastic surgeon, her name is Dr. Christine Hall, who's, she's half Korean. So we're kind of talking about Korean trends and just like the availability of somewhat invasive treatments in Korea is crazy. So like, you know, um, certain like very topical injections and like Botox and like full on plastic surgery. Um, but one thing that I really want to get is something called Microtox. Okay. Which is it's very superficial injections of Botox to help control oiliness. I And that makes sense because we do use Botox in so many different contexts. And so by doing it just closer to the surface, that's all it's doing is getting rid of the excess oiliness. Correct. And she's like in Korea, it's a very popular treatment right now, but it's being in the UK, like invasive procedures are very, very common in the US. They're common as well, but in a much more subtle way, I think. Um, but yeah, in Korea, it's just a very big part of the beauty industry there. And it's really cool what they innovate around or what they discover over there in that regard. Do you think that's going to be something that has like the the trickle over effect? And we're going to start hearing soon in the U.S. that that's something people are encouraging, you know, Botox for excessive oiliness? I hope so. When she told me that, I was like, can you get me the data on that? Because that's my big thing is I'm like, is there actual like clinical evidence or just research done into this and she's like yes let me find the papers and get them to you but that's such a big concern people have and I my big platform 
that I'm like building right now is cosmetic topically applied can only achieve so much. If you want specific benefits around certain things, you have to go a little bit more skin deep and that's an invasive procedure. Sure. Sure. And, and really I have always, I've been getting Botox for many years and I've always kind of tried to just dispel all of the, the hate honestly around it, because it's like why it's totally fine to put anything on the top of your face. But as soon as a needle is involved, suddenly it turns into this whole like, Oh, real housewives and it's superficial and we shouldn't be spending the money. And it's like, you'll spend more money on a cream, but you don't want to do anything deeper in your skin. It makes no sense. A cream without, without evidence, a cream with just a lot of marketing. I love it. I love it. We're on the same page. <laughs> so it's Hispanic, Hispanic Heritage Month, and we at Cosmoprof North America are looking forward to our second Miami show in January. So let's talk Latinx beauty brands and trends. First up, what are some of your favorite Latinx founded brands? This year was a big year for hair care for me, and two big brands were Ceremonia, which is at Sephora, and then actually a brand I discovered at Cosmoprof North America called Vida, Vida Bars. It's basically water-free bars, and it's for, that you have shampoo, conditioner, leave-in treatments, and she has them for fine to medium, medium to curly hair. Skincare-wise, um, Experiment World is a chemist-founded brand. The founder, her name is Lisa. She's Puerto Rican like me. Really cool innovation. You have Hyperskin, that's Afro-Latina founded. And then people always forget this. Susan Yar from Naturium is half Mexican. So in my head, Naturium's a Latinx brand. Okay, I love that. <laughs> You're like, don't forget. <laughs> so now I feel like, especially because K-Beauty is sort of having the second wave. So Americans are very familiar with K-Beauty. We've been hearing about it for years. If K-Beauty is known for innovation and pushing the envelope on FXC and formulations, what would Latinx beauty be known for? I feel like the two big things with Latinx beauty is A, the inclusivity element, being Latin, you're an ethnicity. And with that, you have such a spectrum of skin colors, skin types, hair textures. And so with any Latinx beauty brand, inclusivity is always at the root. I feel like, again, Vida Bars is a really good element of that or example of that. Um, I met the founder and the minute she sat down in front of me, she was this gorgeous girl with the most gorgeous, beautiful, curly hair. And I was like, what are you using? And she was like, my products. So I was like, that's perfect. Literally the best advertisement. <laughs> Literally. Like you, she sold me instantly. And so like that kind of inclusivity within that space, but also with us, especially because with Latin people, I'm Caribbean, for example, my husband, he's Mexican. You have South America. So there's a very different subculture within those regions. And so you always see the Latinx brands pay homage to like where they come from, the native elements of their culture. So there's another skincare brand. It's called Republica. And the founder, her name is Julissa. She's Dominican. So there's a lot of elements of her Dominican background in the brand and the products. So they're just really celebratory, not honestly just about the product, which is really cool that that's sort of built into the brand culture. Oh, a thousand percent. Yeah. You are sunscreen connoisseur, to put it quite mildly. I uh, am a huge sunscreen user and advocate for it. So I love all of your content, dispelling myths talking about how we should be using it. It's not giving us cancer, all the things. But what is a white space in the sunscreen market that you would love to see filled? That is a great question. Obviously, the inclusivity element is such a huge aspect. For me, it's the, and this kind of like extends beyond a sunscreen, I get really aggravated with non- non-science people really being the forefront of these brands and so they kind of go off of marketing slash what they personally believe but they don't actually know and that's why we see things like non-nano zinc and titanium dioxide which because they're non-nano meaning they're bigger particle sizes they're going to be more white and thus that greatly reduces any inclusivity aspect and the reason they do so is just because of a lot of misinformation so i feel like again more science focused individuals going beyond just marketing claims and actually creating good, effective products is very necessary. And on our side of things, there's a lot of innovation happening to hopefully try to create more inclusive mineral sunscreens, for example. Um, so for me, that's always the big one. I'm like, the potential is there, but no one's hopping on it. Okay. So I have to ask you, as we were talking about this, the fact that we need more science people behind brands, is there potentially a Glow by Ramon brand in the future? No comment. Some secret, 
some groundwork is being laid, but fundamentally, um, I think there's a lot of really great things happening right now, which I personally just would love to support. And it takes a lot of time and money to start a brand. I will say that, especially with what and how I'd want to potentially maybe do it if I were to do it. Um, so yeah, we'll see. But there's cool but things never happen- say no. Never say no. Yes, correct. But not not right now. Fair enough. Now, this question I ask all of my guests, even though it's completely not a fair question, because we're all beauty people here, but what is one beauty product? One beauty product you cannot live without. I think just a really good sunscreen. There's a toss up between two. One is Sun Bums Daily Sun Gel SPF 50. And the other one is the new Beauty of Joe Sun Aqua Relief. Or Relief Sun Aqua Fresh. Ooh, balloons. Hello. Let's celebrate that. <laughs> Um, that's amazing i hope that stays in the video i i'm gonna make sure that stays (laughs) but those two just they have such a great finish on the skin they're fairly affordable and they give really good protection but for me it's also just like you get the protection but your skin just looks a little bit more refined so so double duty correct good skin day but you're protected okay i love that okay well that went super fast it was super fun but that concludes this episode of five minutes with Ramon. Thank you so much for sharing all of your insight. It's been so fun. Um, and for those of you who maybe do not follow him, look him up glow by Ramon. You will not be disappointed. Thank you, Emily. So nice to be a part of this and yeah, so nice to meet you guys.